Okay. Um, yeah, so you, um, the team has liberated the village of La Devisi, um, saved the life of Captain Hilka, I guess saved the life from Varpu, who was all set to dispatch Captain Hilka. He was. But you guys yeah. intervened. Um, and now Captain Hilka and her word keepers have been um, jailed in the, in the jail there. And Aseri and his crew and Varpu and her people are joining together with you and about 25 villagers. Ooh. Yeah, I have um, a grand total of 34 people. Yeah, that sounds about right. Not including you guys. Is that right? Or including you guys? Uh, you know what? It doesn't say. It just says 34 people and then a couple expurlatives. Because I was obviously very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have 34. Um, 24 plus Varpu's gang plus the series gang. Okay. Um, so that's probably not plus us, but... Yeah, I think you're in, a, yeah, 34 NPCs. Um, and um, that whole group has been gathered together and Aseri has left the town um, in the care of Nicholas the Scribe, who was his trusted kind of, um, kind of secret um, contact when um, um, the, the village was controlled by Hilka. And you are setting off back down out of the mountains towards your hometown. Um, so I guess I'm picturing uh, the, the sort of people that we know of, the crews, the, the bandit crews, the rebels, the main rebels, kind of in the lead um, of this group um, as you're on a march. Um, and I guess I'd be curious to hear what you, um, as you start off on this journey, which will take you, you know, you, you could go on a forced march and you get to reunion in half a day. I believe we said you were setting out, didn't really have much time to rest. Um, and if you stayed up and you were up all night and then you, had, you wanted to set out as quickly as possible. So you had a couple of hours of, of rest and eating, I think. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna say, Jan? Um. That sounds right. No, in, in my mind, I had that we were actually um, looking down at Rayuna, but maybe we hadn't gotten there yet. Oh, had we? Maybe we did. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a <laughs> week. Do you guys remember that? We can jump there. We can totally yeah, jump remember. there. Yeah, remember. I don't says, remember that we got there. <clears throat> yeah, my notes say it's we're heading out. It. But that could that could be any point of the journey. Maybe that was when we were we ended one time where we were looking at Rayona, but then we went up to La, La Devesi. So maybe that was what I was remembering. I have no idea at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I go back and watch the tape, but uh, did not, yeah. <laughs> not manage to do that this week. Um, but uh, can at least give us some context so we know what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, and actually, you know, the journey out of the mountains. Um, so I guess the question is, do you want to do this in a half a day, which would be a forced march for everybody, which I think in this case would mean everybody, you guys would all take, um, uh, I'd say um, a D6 of ability score damage to be split between strength, constitution, and dexterity. Um, and it would give everybody in the crew, every, all of the NPCs would get the tag, um, you know, exhausted from from walking so fast or to take a full day and not worry about that. What are your two, two thoughts on it? Uh, initial thought is to um, march in half the day. Um, but that's just a gut reaction. <laughs> um, go, go, go. My, my initial gut was to take it easy just because 
I'm imagining that we'll, we'll all start to lose um, characteristic points, which is maybe, maybe that's okay. One, one hybrid idea would be to take the whole day and then send somebody on ahead, like to run ahead and just see if they can find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like a scout. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so they can let us know if um, the hand is on his way. Is that what they're called? The hand? Yeah. 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 Um, if the hand is on his way or has, has arrived already or anything like that. What do you think? Yeah, but who, who could we send that wouldn't arise suspicion? It would have to, it would have to be somebody from Rayuna. Oh, I wish that we had given um, uh, uh, Topia some sort of signal. Well, you can totally retroactively say that you gave a signal. That would make sense. You know, that like, we, you know, we need you to check in with us. Ooh, and then he can meet us half, um, meet us around. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, so it sounds like Jan's proposing take it easy to Rayuna and Jan were you saying send a scout away from Rayuna ahead to, to check out where the hand is and report back well and Jan, John's, John's be, shaking his head <laughs> well no I mean no I don't I don't think that we should that's going to take too much time the best case scenario is that the hand is still a day and a half a day out um, but I think I, I thought what Jan was saying is that we try to get like news, like whether there's rumors or rumblings or yeah. Did I, did I interpret that right? Yeah. I mean, if somebody could go ahead and find out what's happening in Rayuna, if the hand is there, if the hand is expected, mm. um, if anything's going on so that when we arrive, they can just tell us um, and we'll, you know, you know, save an hour or, or two of scouting ourselves. Um, and it would make sense that Topias could already be fulfilling that role, right? As an information. Yeah, I was thinking that like to even expedite it even more, like send somebody ahead, just send someone running down the mountain and, uh, you know, get there, try to contact Topias and find out what the story is. And if something's really bad, you know, or whatever, they could run back and tell us or, or just meet us. And then we wouldn't have to spend an hour or two doing that. You know, if the hand was about to arrive, then that would, that would make all the difference. Mm. Um, I mean, we could say that we uh, told Topias to like, you know, a couple times during the day, look at um, Weirin's hut. And if there's like a bough of red leaves on top, then like that's the sign that we like need to reconvene with him. <clears throat> and you would meet at the at the hut or in the woods near the hut. What, what kind of a meeting place would you prefer in that case? That sounds that sounds fine to me. Yeah. What about you two? I think so. I mean, it's like on the edge of the um, woods. Um, so, the, but there still is this issue of go fast or not go fast. I'm easy either way. Okay. I mean, there's something heroic about trying to go real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going slow. We're going um, one day pace so that we don't um, exhaust everybody. Yeah. Right. Forget, oh. You're okay with that, John? Yeah, I mean, I think Taimi would agree with Muirin that I think if it was just the six or how many of us, the four of us, four of us, oh, five, four, yeah, including Ani. like if it was just the four of us, then yeah, I'd be more cautious. But if we, with with twenty thirty six people at our backs, I mean, I guess they're going to be yeah, everybody's going to suffer. Yeah, let's take it slow. Everybody's going to suffer. <laughs> yeah. There might be some hardy souls in there who wouldn't suffer, but we would figure them out later. Um, all right, so take it slow and prearranged signal to Topias. 
Mm -hmm. um, and what about uh, Paivigi's idea of sending a, a, someone fleet of foot ahead to make, to like even give plenty of advance, you know, put the, put the, put the branch on top of the hut. Um, I guess mm -hmm. by the time you get there, maybe that, that has sending somebody ahead wouldn't make much of a difference because Tapias would probably be responding already. Um, I, yeah. I, I don't think it's necessary. And in fact, I think that like a lone runner coming from the uh, La Devisi direction might cause suspicion if they're spotted by a word keeper. Just by accident or whatever, yeah. Yeah. What if, um, what if Mirren went, would you want to do that? Because yeah, Mirren's like the only person I would trust to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I would agree that if anyone went, it would be me. I think we're in... It's okay with either decision. <laughs> um, so I, I, I we're going to do it if there's no, like, obvious advantage, I guess. Yeah. And uh, at this point, it's sort of like, well, they'll get there either way. So... <clears throat> Well, maybe the obvious um, advantage would be once you get there, you obviously want to leave your, your sort of small army in some hidden place, and Mirren might be the person to approach the, you know, to like make the, get the branch up there, seek, you know, stealthily kind of arrange for the meeting with the PS. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So just to like ensure um, a, a safe arrival and yeah, the secure. Um, yeah, as long as everybody else is out of sight, if Mirren's the one who like kind of, you know, probably the least likely to be seen just because of your fifi skills. I mean, at, at very, at very uh, least, I think having a scout going ahead um, would be good. Just because even if it's not way ahead, if it's like, you know, half an hour ahead, just to know so that if like they're for some reason sending on like a group of soldiers up to La Devesi, we don't meet them on the trail. Right, so just have mm -hmm. a, a point person for just simple safety. Right, okay, yeah. and then so like as a, as a um, like a uncertainty factor, this might ensure more positive outcome, but because there's gonna be like an extra role involved, it might also create like a bad outcome for the group to arrive if there's a scout ahead. Um, the scout will, there'll be one role regardless. So I'll tell you just up front, oh, okay. the, the march down from the mountains, you're not going to need to roll. You've got a big group of people, like very few animals or wild animals are going to approach you. And, um, it's really, once you get down out of the mountains, you know, I, from what you're talking about, you might be going into the motherwood to get, to kind of cut across towards, um, to, cause that would be a hidden route, right? Like you wouldn't be noticeable yeah. if you were doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and then you'd get within a certain range of the edge of the woods. Everybody would sort of hold tight and um, the advance, you know, I guess maybe Lee Mirren would like go, go set the signal and then Topias would come meet you guys. Does that map out? And then the whole time Mirren would be scouting ahead just in case, because once you get to the motherwood, there maybe is some chance something would happen. Mm -hmm. The trip out okay. of the mountains themselves will be safe. Yeah, to ensure safety, I would, I would do that. Okay. Um, great. So we've established that, uh, and you're not going to rush. So you're not going to lose, um, how many, how's everybody doing on ability points and stuff? Is anybody hurting? Does anybody feel put out? Um, yeah, I don't think I've lost any, but, um, but, but a lot of my stats are kind of on the edge of, of dropping if I lose any more. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason not to run. <clears throat> okay. Right. Great. Uh, well, you, um, so past noon, you get to a point in the hills where you're looking down on the, um, uh, the treetops that, of, of the motherwood stretching away to the south. And um, it's an overcast day. And um, uh, it's basically like a, the, a good point to sort of leave the main trail and head down across the 
um, the hills, the rocky hills to uh, get into the woods and then not go super deep into the woods, but sort of stay to stay towards the edge and make your way down um, towards Rainier Neb um, in, in secret, essentially. So for that, that section of the journey when you actually are entering the motherwood and um, it's like going to be a couple hours of making your way through the trees and undergrowth. That's going to call for um, a set out roll. And let's do that. Just printed out my new, my new rules. Where they are. Uh, let's have Mira, you're in, you're in the lead, so that's what you have me roll that one. Cool. It's 2d6, and the motherwood is. Um, Dangerous, so plus one. <clears throat> Ooh, 12. Nice. Okay. You complete the leg in good time. Um, great. So everybody, uh, you um, find it. Well, I think, I think Tiny probably knows a good spot for this many people to... Um, to sort of hang out, or or do you think it'd be wiser to sort of spread them out in pods? How, how does how does Tiny imagine the best way to like handle this group of people in the motherwood is in terms of like getting them a spot? Um. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I'm trying to think. Is there a force that you would approximate this to? In terms of the you know, like is it is it like a northwestern or yeah northwest like you know evergreen forest? Is it an eastern deciduous forest or? It's kind of mixed. Okay. Um, well, that means it's going to have like fair ground coverage. Yes. And like sm and short shrubs. Yep. Uh, I think I have a picture of it if I can. Like that last time, if I can navigate. There we go. Yeah. So it's actually it looks like mostly evergreen. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think that like it. I, I don't think we need to like separate into like groups of six or something. I think if we just split the group in half, I mean, 36 people is a lot. Yeah. So if we could find like two kind of ravines, like the sort of thing we're looking at here, like a, a stream bed or, you know, a patch of erosion between two root systems. Okay, great. Just find like two of those to split up the group. Okay, great. And you, you know the area really well, so that's not okay. hard at all. Um, and yeah, you know, the usual, um, Wildlife, nothing, nothing untoward occurs, and um, where in you were you going to do anything other than set the set the signal for for TPS? Um, I guess I'll check if anyone's been to the hut, uh, or. If it looks like, yeah, if anything's been mm. touched or altered. <laughs> the book's still there? Yeah, like, um, did we move all the books to that secret, um, that secret spot? That's what I remember, yeah. You had yeah. them sort of buried in the middle of the, of the room. They were in the hut, like buried in the floor. middle of the hut. Yeah, they were yeah. in the hut, exactly. Yeah. Um, I guess I want to check that no like word keepers um, came and like did extra. I don't know, pilfering. Yeah. Why don't you? Um, okay, so you get to the edge of the woods, um, and now we're talking. It's like well, that was like a full day, so it's actually evening. Um, um, no, actually, it's by the time you get there, night, so night has basically fallen because um, it was if you guys were not rushing that day um it's clear night there's stars and there's a moon out so you can actually see and you're an elf so you can actually see very well um and you from out from the outside it, appearances it looks like your little hut is not any much different than um before except that a number of um as you kind of quietly approach you see that on the um, in front of it there is a um, there's a kind of rock that's always been there, um, kind of a moss covered rock, and um, there's a number of braided flower um, like rings, circles of flowers that have been braided together, like reeds, I guess you might say, um, kind of 
um, scattered on this rock and around the rock. Um, and in the middle of one of them at the top of the rock is a little uh, clay um, cup, like a little simple clay cup. And when you sort of glance into it, you see that there's some kind of liquid in the, in the cup. The hut seems otherwise undisturbed, but now I need you to roll luck. Oh, they think, okay. they think Sorry, where was there. the cup? <laughs> Outside the hut near the front door, there's a there's a mossy rock in the ground, like a um, pretty good size, you know, three or four feet across. That's always been there, and there's um, these flower wreaths kind of on it and scattered around it. And then, sort of right on top, of that sort of highest point of the rock, which is only only comes up about your knees, is a little ceramic um, cup. They think we're dead. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, that's right, because Topias told them we were dead. <gasps> uh, oh, good job, Topias, man. Did, um... Give him some XP. <laughs> okay. Sorry, did we, um, know that's how we mourn the dead? Or uh, that's you're, how the you're from, do? Uh, that is a way that, yeah, there's no kind of single way that Rayunans do. Well, you guys should tell me, actually. You Rayunans should tell me. This is definitely one of the ways that the dead are honored, but and you guys have also mentioned that if, if the body is available, it gets kind of placed in the motherwood. But are there, um, if there's any other ways that you imagine honoring the dead, then um, you can totally... Uh, I mean, I would think that maybe they would take something um, that is familiar of ours, like a possession of ours, and, and bury that instead um, of the, oh great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or, yeah, some kind of a, some version of that ceremony. I think that, you know, like, like in Christian um, beliefs, you know, you, you always want to have a body that you can bury in hallowed ground, um, and probably the Ray Unans would want to do that as well. Um, la lacking a body, bury some kind of symbolic. Yeah, uh, I would think so. Yeah. Great. So, like a bunch of books that you find under the floorboard. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we're in, you're familiar with these practices, even though you're not like, you know, you didn't grow up in Ray Una, but you're familiar with them. So, that's, that's, yeah, you see this. And you realize that not only um, does it seem to signify that they are honoring your, 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 your passing, but that because you're um, an elf who's not a member of the village, that the way that they're kind of um, using these flower wreaths is unusual for that. And it seems to be about the fact that you are um, um, different from the rest of the villagers, like this kind of memorial is not something you're super familiar with. So they seem to have either come up with it or maybe it's an old tradition when it comes to um, elven friends. Um, mm. But you, you have this moment of realization where you're like, oh, this is my memorial. Oh, um, yeah, Marion feels very, um, uh, yeah, I guess just, uh, touched by the gesture and um, yeah, never expected that kind of um, uh, kind of gesture, I suppose, of respect. And my luck is a zero modifier anyway, so there's no, um, it's just a straight 2d6 yep. for me. Oh, three. Ooh. <laughs> Sad. Um, yeah, so you, uh, um, there's a simple rope um, latch on the door. You just, you know, it's a piece of rope put through a hole and it holds the latch. And so you just pull on that and the door opens. Um, 
and you go to step inside and you see that um, the hole has been dug up. Mm. And I can't remember if it was like a mat that you put on top of it, what the concealing thing was. Yeah, but, just a um, mat. <laughs> yeah, so the mat is kind of, um, it's actually rolled up and set. There's like a little, um, tell me if, if this conflicts at all with your vision of what your home looks like, just let me know. <clears throat> but I was thinking there was like a, a wooden bench maybe. And the mat has been rolled up and set on that bench and the, um, the hole has been dug up and the books are missing. Got to get those things. They found the books earlier anyway, so they knew where the hole was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what do you do next? Um, do we think that it'll take like another two hours or so before the rest of camp arrives or you're, you're your crew they're yeah you know, they're within they're, they're not going to be far behind you um the question in terms of timing is when did you guys tell tapias to look for the red branch because it's nighttime right now so it might not <clears throat> i guess unless you took more proactive action it might be a while until tapias saw the signal unless you had given him other instructions which you're free to kind of invent <clears throat> I mean, it seems, oh. yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how often we would have asked him to look and also like w how accurate or like how much, how much timekeeping can be done in this day and age. I, you know, sunrise, high noon and sunset seem like logical times. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Just like you get in the habit of just regular, and I'm sure he would be like, if there was a short story about Tapias, <clears throat> it would be all about how he went about his daily business and like compulsively like peeked to see if the mark was on top of this. You know what I mean? Like that would be his life would be like looking for a sign because he doesn't know what happened to you guys. So yes, he would, um, whatever the signal is, he would definitely be checking it pretty regularly. Um, I think the only, the only issue is that it's nighttime now. So that means it might be another 12 hours before he um, checks unless you want to do something sooner. Yeah, I, I would wonder about just going and knocking on his, his door. Mm. If it would take 12 hours. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that if we're thinking that Yeah. Um, so like sneakily looking gonna, for Topias. Okay, so you're gonna, Miran's gonna sneak into town. Um, you know that he lives with his parents um, and you know where they live. So I think uh, I think given that you're an elf and you're a thief and I think at night there are two word keepers patrolling the village, it's not going to be hard for you to get to his place without being, without being noticed. Um, but it's just getting, getting out unseen. That might be tricky. Well, for you, probably not, but if, Oh. It all depends on what's going to happen when you talk to um, when you talk to him. So you get to his parents' house, and um, there's no lights on. Can I um, 
<laughs> maybe like creep to his to the window. Sir, sir, sir. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, wooden shutters. Let's see. It's. Um, I guess the shutters are closed at night to keep bugs out. It's kind of we're almost in the summer at this point. Um, so yeah, but you know which room is his, and so you're at you're at the window. Um. And which house is this? It is. I'm gonna let's see here. It's right um, here. Oh, cool. Oh, not that's too, not far in. Okay. Not too far from the old tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you're, you know. Yeah. So if it, do you think it can only open from the inside? Like someone can't like. Open no, you can, you, can, um, you can totally open them from the outside, yeah. Unless they were unless they were locked and people don't usually lock their shutters here. So you can, um, yeah. Okay, so very, very quietly open the shutter and um, I'm just going to glance in and see that Piet is in his bed and hopefully just make sure that it's Tapias and not someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, um, uh, yeah, so if you picture your, you creep through the nighttime village, there's like crickets, there's just a candle here and there, it's mostly dark, um, it's very quiet, uh, and you sneak around the back of the house, um, and you, you know, there's a moment where you're like, was it this one or this one, you find the right one, quietly um, pull that um, shutter open just a little bit and peer in, and thanks to your elf vision, um, you can clearly see his feet, his bare feet um, on a, he's got a sleeping mat on the, like a woven um, uh, mat on the, on the floor that he's sleeping on. And I guess, could you identify Tobias's feet? <laughs> yeah, you peek in a little further and you can tell that it's, that it's him. Yeah. Well, maybe I know like his certain like snoring pattern or something. <laughs> yeah, I guess you spent some time with him on the road. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Yes. We've all like him. That's perfect. You totally, you told, you're like, yep, that's him. That's Topias's breathing. <laughs> I remember that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll um, just whisper, hey, wake Topias. Wake up. Um, it's quietly, but you know, intentionally. What? 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 Oh, oh, oh. oh my! By the tree! <laughs> and he like, uh, he like sits up and like um, bangs his head on the shutter, um, uh, the other shutter. Um, oh, um, and then, um, <gasps> where? In you're back. Is everyone okay? Um, I will whisper like, let's, uh, it's nice to see you to be, <laughs> um, but we should, we should go um, somewhere. Uh, we should um, follow me. It's okay. not um, safe to talk here. So okay. we'll try to talk in a safe place. Okay, so he come, he um, uh, he pulls on a shirt, and um, he was already he's already wearing like um, short pants. <laughs> he pulls on a shirt and uh, uh, steps quietly out the window um, to follow you. So where do you do you head back to the woods? Yeah, um, we would yes, as quietly head back to um, my hut. Okay. Uh, I think with him in tow, now you have to roll to make sure you guys get out without being noticed. So, is there a curfew in this town? Um, not like a technical they... curfew, but because okay. there's no, um, and you can see a lot by moonlight and starlight, but most folks, unless their occupation demands that they're out at night, most folks are at bed. Basically, they've eaten and are asleep by shortly after sundown. So it would, it would look suspicious. 
for people walking around. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's just, oh, like curfew, especially in terms of the word keepers. Yeah, I don't, there's no yeah. curfew in, I don't think it would look necessarily suspicious. Your profile might be noticeable because you're slighter and move differently than um, the people in town, than most of the people in town. But um, I guess, yeah, maybe nobody would really notice to Pius take to have second thoughts unless they saw him doing something strange so would you want to it is the middle of the night it's strange yeah do you want to just sort of let him act normal like he's just walking or do you want to uh, be sly um it's I, I guess my instinct is to just say, meet me at my place, and then, like, we just wait for him. <laughs> oh, great. And then you just disappear. Just so I, because I think if I'm there, I yeah. add this extra yeah. covert That's thing. That's perfect. Yep. Okay. And you already feel confident that you can get around this village without people seeing you. Yeah. So, and then he can just be the, the kid out at night, um, whatever he can't sleep or whatever he's got a story okay great um yeah well in that case um yeah so you disappear and uh you know about whatever 15 minutes later he um shows up at your house oh my god i can't believe i can't believe it you're where's everyone they're on their way um Tapias, you've done such a wonderful um, thing for us. Thank you. What, um, you mean by lying about your death? <laughs> yes, it was very heroic. Um, what, tell us, um, or tell me, um, so our, our friends are on the way and I'll catch him up just to, so that he knows that we've been successful yeah. and have, um, you know, got people on the way um and i was wondering if he could yeah give us any news or um what should we tell them when they arrive um they think um well first of all everybody already thought we were dead <laughs> even you <laughs> they didn't yes they didn't think <laughs> they were um surprised to see me come back and i felt guilty lying but um um they had already honored our, our passing and then you know um after after we were missing for a month and a half they assumed the worst about us few, very few people you know go south into the highlands and, and return plus they had heard news of these bandits that are roving around um as far as i can tell um, they, they're expecting the hand um in a few days, that, uh, I don't know, three days, four days, maybe as soon as two. Um, there's no way to know for sure, but but given the, the last time they sent out the um, the emissary to the capital, that's their estimate. Good. So we have time. I think so. People are anxious. There's all kinds of stories about this, what a, this hand, what they can do, and why they're coming. What can what can what can they do? Well, they say that they can make people do things just with words. That they can say things, and people will do them no matter what they are. That's what the stories say. Sounds terrible. The word keepers brag about it and are making everyone fearful. Um, Elmeri, we don't see much of Elmeri. He seems to hang out in his house most of the time. But everyone was very. Um, there has been a lot of sorrow in Rayuna at the idea that we were gone. And 
that sorrow remains because I am the only one who has returned in their eyes. Well, they won't, they definitely won't see this coming. Um, um, would, do you think um, we should try to meet up with the, um, the crew and yeah, um, or we just wait for them at the hut. I don't know what your guys' plan was. Were you just gonna wait in the woods for Weirin to return or were like Pyviki and Taimi gonna show up at that? Okay, yeah, so Taimi says. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can just we're, take the PS right into the woods and um, the, they'll they'll be there by now, so. Okay, so I can lead him to that spot. Yeah, so we can just okay. jump to that. So Tapias shows up. Hanika, Pyviki. Oh, and he embraces you. He's so happy that you're alive. And he looks around, you know, he, so first he sees you guys and he goes and hugs you. And then he like pulls back and he looks and he sees, you know, the, all the La Devisians sort of standing up, um, at, you know, one after another. And it's like this, this um, unexpected kind of crowd of people in the forest. And he's like totally taken aback. Um, the people of La Devisi have come back with us just as the people of Reuna helped them to rid themselves of the word keepers. So have they come to fulfill their oath. Soon they'll be gone, Topias. And I, I clasp his good shoulder. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never imagined that, that this moment would come. But here we uh, are, our friends from the mountains. How long has it been since we've seen them? I, I can't. And he like says the name of someone, you know, is my uncle. And um, one of them says like, cousin, and comes out and embraces him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's really, that's really beautiful. I, I did not know that for so long, these two villages were so separate. Yeah, especially after the Corkine came in. Yeah, um, so here he, he's 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 here. He shared the news. If there's anything else, information that you want from him about town, he can let you know. No, it's only been about... it's only been like a day and a half since you guys parted ways. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, because he went. Yeah. Has he um, information on the the guards, like the number guards, and um... currently in Rayuna, it's the same number as when you guys left. There are four word keepers. Oh. Plus, plus El Mary, and this contingent arriving from the capital is intended to supplement that. The first, the first larger group that came through were carried on to La Devisi, and those are the guys you defeated there. Um, but currently, there's there's only four word keepers. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> 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 They're gonna get so pwned. Um, and there's a pri We have like a sort of a jail in that town already. The there, I believe that um, good old uh, good Yorko. Old, good old Yorko. I got out the character sheet. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he, he uh, has a, a rotten, like, little bed and living space in the back of the Kolkia Tallow. Um, Great. Is it just, is it still just El Mary, or do they have a proper word giver here? They do not have, the, the hand is intended to be the actual word giver. Wow. Okay. Um, I think we have to pull a Ledevacy here and go in hot and get the two guards that are patrolling and then surround the Corkia Talo and just get them. Yeah. Or do we, or do we wait? I mean, if we wait till daytime, there's no guarantee. They might just switch and the two might go to sleep. So there still might be two inside the Corkia Talo. Um, we could do the old, Come wake up at dawn, uh, before dawn, and and go and rustle them up, so that probably two of them will be sleeping still. Try to get in there before the they know that anything is happening. 
Yeah, definitely. Like take six hours to rest right now. Yeah. And then. And then before dawn come and <laughs> they always get up before dawn. Um, and uh, yeah, try to grab the guards before they can alert anyone and, um, and then go and kick in the door or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Wake Elmeri up out of his bed. Yeah. I think um, I actually think I'm not like worried about the word keepers. Um, and I'm definitely not worried about Elmeri. Um, I think the only thing that we should like watch out for and just put, put like in our mental backpack is uh, any fires. I think like the worst thing here is that they could send some sort of signal to the hand that would ruin our, our game. Yeah. Elmeri is like a super fucking, actually, no, I don't know if he's too much of a, he might be too much of a coward to just like light, you know, like the Corkia Tallow on fire to send a signal or something, but I wouldn't put it past a word keeper to yeah. try to send some sort of signal. So we're just, yeah. Or they could, if they, if they managed to sneak away, they could run. Yeah. And tell I mean, them. maybe that's a, maybe we should have like a couple teams around the river and around the road leading out of town. And, you know, maybe yeah. even some patrolling to the left and to the right, well, you know, to the north and to the south of that bridge so that if there are, you know, yeah, cause you're right. All it takes is one to escape. If anybody makes a run for it have like a, 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 a security cordon to keep them, to trap them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, th I think we could commit like 12 people to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got run. enough. You got the people power. Yeah, I mean the only other danger I see right now besides that is that some of our people get killed because they have crossbows. Yeah. So um what is and this is this is maybe a little out of character. What's your what's what's both of yours intention with these uh Colkeen? Like ca uh, capture versus kill, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I say capture, knowing that there will be inevitable or like likely death um, on their end, just because they're trained to um, guess fight to the end. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think that trying to overwhelm them with our numbers and just tell them to surrender, there's a good chance that they will. Um, and try to keep uh, Varpu, um, mm -hmm. give her some project to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, well, I mean, maybe maybe she's perfect to lead the, uh, if she'll even take the job, the, the don't let them escape out of town job. Um, are we going to offer them the same deal that we offered the Colkeen in La Devisi? Oh, remind, just remind the, the exchange? Uh, just the, you know, we, we, that's the, how we got the, the captain to get out of that house was to be like, we will let you go. <laughs> we will let you go to the capital. Well, that was her... Um... That was her negotiation. I mean, I would offer them that we would um, give them a trial. Well, that's right. <laughs> you know, I, d I don't know that these these word keepers have done any um, mm. uh, terrible damage to our town besides oh. taking it over. Mm. Um, I, oh, besides that. <laughs> I mean, they... They didn't, I don't know what happened in the early days if they took it by force, but these ones have come in and um, they've only been there for a couple months. And, and we, Topias can tell us if they have been killing people or whatever. Um, yeah. um, do me a favor, Jan, roll. Um, I'm gonna check for that. Roll 2d6 with uh, no modifier. 
Check for if they kill people. Well, if they not necessarily yeah. killed things, but um, yeah, how peaceful their presence has been. Right, right, right. It's a nine. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Topias reports that um, much as you guys remember, they ha are um, they have a kind of um, they're clearly different from the locals, and there's they have a kind of aggressive stance most of the time. But um, none of them has done anything other than be a bully in a kind of verbal and in physically intimidating sense. Nobody, none of nobody, none of them has harmed any villager. Um, and there have even been moments when Topias has witnessed kind of like some kind of you know momentary human exchange between one of them and um, um, a reunion. Yeah, I mean, I think that Ibiki's goal is to rid the town of uh, Corkane rule, but she doesn't have a, a, a vendetta like Varpu does against them. Um, you know, I would do, I would do a trial of some kind and um, to see like, with what happened with um, uh, the the house servant that got sent away, uh -huh. what people's judgment on El Mary is, but um, but that's you know, Paiviki's goal is to see them gone. Um, not so much to have rivers run with their blood like uh, Varpu wants. Hmm. Or Taimi, right? I mean, I don't know if Taimi doesn't necessarily have Varpu's blood thirst, but has some resentment. No, yeah, she has her resentment, but she's definitely, ever since she saw Varpu lose herself mm -hmm. to that rage, mm -hmm. um, she's been feeling very lost. Mm. When it When it comes to that feeling of like that, that resentment, but then up against that experience. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, okay, I just, John Chidurgeon just wanted to check in with the two of you. Very important before people start to die. Um, so do, so we will want to do like a, a daylight raid, 12 people along the river and uh, Um, yeah, and then the rest of us try to take the, the two patrollers somewhere maybe away from the Corkia Tallow. So in case there's one, you know, like early worm or early bird, they don't get hip to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. One, one patrol um, goes up towards Costi's house um, and and back and kind of just does this. And the other one goes out to the tree like that. Nobody ever comes over to this area where the carpenter's house oh. is, stuff like that. Oh, they just patrol by themselves? Uh, single guards, yep. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, as noted, there's usually two parked in the, the big house. Okay. Yeah, I, I, let's just split up and just grab both of them and reconvene in the square and encircle the Corkia Tallow and just bust bust in. <laughs> grab El Mary. But do we want to um, do we want to try to sneak in this time so we don't end up with the same kind of uh, blockade that happened? If that is the case, does uh, that make any sense? We can certainly try. Yeah. Uh, yes, we. I think we should certainly be aspirational about that. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if um, some of us would want to try to like get up to the Corkiatalo before all this goes down, mm. and like try to like get inside. Um, before they're alerted to anything happening, something like that. 
at the same time as the patrols are being captured. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's too complicated, but. So just a quick, so um, 12 people head down the stream, cross the river and go here to block any runners, right? Mm, I was even thinking like, yeah, spreading out along. Cause I remember when we, when we did some shenanigans near that city, we ended up just like going through the river, you know, down yeah. here. I, you can't see on the screen. Or maybe you can. I don't see anything yet. Am I, am I, do I need to give you permissions? Make a video. I'm making you co-host just to see. No, it's okay. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we have just like, you know, spread them out, you know, in pairs of two within eye shot along here, you know, anyone that's going to run, you know, we, we can't do anything if they run up there or if yeah, they yeah, run yeah. down there, but this is, I think the best that we can do. Okay, great. Spread them out in pairs. Awesome. And then um, ambush at the like furthest extent of the patrol routes. Like when the, does that make sense? Yeah, I would, I would yeah. say, yeah, we grab, or what you're even talking about like a pincer movement, you know, where we, we simultaneously like grab these guys, but then also try to like secure here yeah. so that we're all just not like raging on the Corkia Talo at the same time. We could probably like go wake up Yarpo, uh, Yarko and get mm. the keys or something. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Uh, that that one question that arises is, does Yarko still have his job since the court came out? Or has he been turned into the village, uh, you know, street sweeper or something? God, poor guy. Yeah, I think that Yarko definitely does not have his job anymore, um, but he may still have keys, right? Like he might have some... I mean, there's no keys. What am I talking about? <laughs> there's, no, there's no, there's not like a lock on this door. They bar it from the inside. But oh, okay. he, he might have, um, uh, you know, I, maybe he can get you in the back way or something like that. Anyway, um, he's there if you if you need him. Yeah. Okay, so you're to get Varpu to lead the security team. You're going to have to convince her. <laughs> Because she wants to, of course, be in the thick of it. So just in case, even though you're thinking you might capture these guys, Marpu would be eager to like strike one down, given the opportunity. So you're going to have to convince Varpu to like um, lead the B team. Mm. Who's willing to do like that? that? <laughs> What's that? Peggy, would that be your department? Yeah, I'm just trying to think if that's, I mean, the, if that's what we really want her to do. Definitely simplifies things. Um, but yeah, if we have to convince her, it doesn't simplify things. Um, you know, alternatively, she could just come with you wherever, whichever part of the plan you're going to do. Yeah, I, I think that, that works pretty well. I think that's good. Um, I mean, I would like to have El Mary or um, Aseri with us as well, okay. so that whenever we do meet El Mary or anybody else, it's clear that this is a unified mm. action. Gives it more weight. Got it. So, where are you thinking that that group would be the one that to hit the? that big house well i was actually wondering if like taimi and um marin maybe would go to the house so they could sneak up and with this you know just the two of them or something so that um or maybe anika um so that they could have a foot in the door before anybody gets word of anything happening that was just a thought, because um, you guys are the sneakiest. Yeah. I always fall over and like, somebody <laughs> has to prop me up, <laughs> fall in holes. Yeah, this is a, yeah, we can't wrestle match our way in. That would be, <laughs> um, uh, I'm okay with that. I, I, I see the merit in that. So, so you would be leading the group that takes the two guards 
Yeah, I think we'd probably actually have to split up and to, you know, to get the guards at, with two different groups, but yeah. And then Muirin and I would make, sh however we do it, make sure that the same thing doesn't happen here as what happened in La Devisi, where they barricade themselves in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see if you can, like, find a way to sneak in or... Uh, uh, silent uh, and sneaky Muirin, what say you? Um, that sounds like a good plan. Um, yeah, I think we'll just have to hope for the best. I mean, it's always it's always dangerous trying to, you know, go into somebody's house, mm. but, um, you know, you guys got crossbows too. Right. A crossbow to a sleep, you know, somebody who's just waking up is pretty convincing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can be sneaky and threatening and Hopefully, yeah, hopefully that the people inside are the number that we think are inside and all that. Yeah, I mean, I would say, um, if, if nothing else, just having a foot in the door, like a way to get into the door before they can latch it so that when they do know this, that we're there, that you guys, I don't know. They, Maybe this is too dangerous of a move. Maybe the safest thing is just to, to like come around the house and say, come out with your hands up. <laughs> no, I think it's worth a try. You know, if, if Yarko has the same residence, we, there could be a window situation. Um, I don't know what these huts are made of, but maybe there's some wall busting, like, like Kool-Aid man smashing through thing that we can do. Um, well, I think, I, think, a, I think it's worth a try and we can just use our best judgment to whether it's a doable thing. And... Right, right. Okay, so you guys is are there a, um, like a courtyard perimeter around the Corquia Talo? Yeah, it's like a, there's, a, there's a, um, a fence all the way around it and then a front, a front gate. Right. Which for you guys would be no problem to climb over that fence. Yeah. Um, do you, Tiami and Mira, do you want to take Manea with you? Manea, the diminutive, stealthy bandit. Isn't she like Manea the quiet? Yes, that's that's right. That's <laughs> well, then yes, I would I would really love to have her around. <laughs> and then I think um, Taru, the carpenter, is going to volunteer to be the security team lead. Okay. If you guys are cool with that. And he'll take Maiki, which is the guy that you one of the guys you released from the jail. Okay. Um, Twelve La Devisians, as you as you mentioned, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's a good number. And then um Paviki, Varpu, and Aseri would um which patrol would you guys go after? Well, um I would wonder if um, who would be who would lead the other team? It could be one I, of us, I like think, a Sari could t lead a team. Yeah, if it wasn't one of you guys, it would be um, Rolf, the Smith. Who? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Um, why doesn't a Sari lead a team? Okay. And me and Varpu can take another team. Okay, great. And then we'll we'll just. We'll come, we'll, we'll convene on the Corquia Talo. And then um, each of you guys have you know, roughly half a dozen La Devisians with you. Or do you want them to hang back in some other capacity? Half a dozen or a dozen? <laughs> well, there's a dozen on the security perimeter. And then yeah. in each of your teams, there would be six or seven. Okay. There's 25 of them total. Okay. Yeah. Six or that seven plus, good. you know, 
six plus u and varpy would be eight. Okay. Okay. The big question is where is Anika going? Oh yeah. She can the big with question. You guys or with or with me. Uh, Anika is not particularly sneaky. Why doesn't she come with, with me and um, Farpu? Okay, great. She has chain mail too, right? So. Yeah. All right. Okay, so when this is gonna happen roughly as long as you can, if you can manage it with the patrol, it's roughly within the same time period, like roughly simultaneous, not precisely, but in generally around the same time. Um, the sneaky team will be trying to get into, find a way into the Corkea Tallow, um, ideally without a fuss, but secondarily <laughs> Kool-Aid. <laughs> Hey, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, um, man. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Uh, so everybody gets six hours of sleep. Everybody consumes a ration. And this is all while you're still camped out in the, in the forest. And um, let's have Taimi roll um, to pass the night. 2d6 uh, plus one for the motherwood being dangerous. Uh, eight. Everyone gets restful sleep and you get to choose one benefit from the night. You can heal or uh, take plus one forward to your first roll of the day. Can you um, tell me how much you heal again? Is it? Three. Uh, what's your combo for? Uh, zero. So you heal uh, one point. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's not based on your level. It's just based on your. Um, I'm going to take the plus one moving forward. Okay. So you can heal a hit point or an ability point. Thank you. Yeah, I'll take plus one forward. Okay. Um, so I think order of operations will be. I like. I think we're going to start with our stealth team. Um, um, yeah. I. Um, I think that while we're in the motherwood, um, Paiviki wants to. Um, just kind of give a little speech about Rayuna and the, the town itself comes from the Motherwood and uh, we, we, we return to the Motherwood when we die and the um, and to basically just ask the Motherwood to give us its um, their um, their blessing in uh, our action of what we're doing today and um, to uh, support us in returning the town to the reunions. And then she goes and she reaches down to get some kind of like forest moss and kind of adorns her face with it, which is like something that happened with the um, the trial um, that she had to do when she got attacked by the bramble cat. Huh? Sort of like a, um, like when you're out in the woods going on a, um, like a, a wood wilderness solo kind of a thing. So, um, and um, is it the kind of thing where you're, are you sort of anointing yourself? Like, yeah, 
taking them yeah. like marking yourself with the forest yeah to show that we come from the forest so this is so this is all in like the kind of gloom of the pre-dawn mm -hmm. you guys can all make each other out you can't see anybody more than 12 feet away and paiviki says these words and the ladevisins who are mountain folk you know are are, are, are you know are, are paying solemn attention but also have this attitude of you, you know they're they're sort of fish out of water like they're in a very strange environment for them um and they they're not puzzled but they're just kind of like um don't know what to exactly what to make but they're they're definitely showing respect um and you notice um voito um staring at you Him up just so you remember. Um, the lure right there, mm -hmm. who had also been attacked by a bramble cat. Yeah. Um, you, Paiviki notices him. Um, his eyes, like, you know, he has, he's, this whole time you've known him, he's had kind of like a dead expression. And, and, he kind of appears to like wake up a little bit to your words and and then is kind of like staring at you in, intently and um his eyes are kind of welling up with um with tears as you go to like mark your face yeah and i would come to to him with some of this mud and offer to anoint him too. I feel like he's going to react to this. This is a keep company role. Mm -hmm. um, you're not actually having a conversation, but I feel like there's like this um, moment of shared or, or some kind of exchange happening. So roll 2d6 to see how um, that goes. Plus nothing or plus? Plus nothing because you don't have any bonds with him yet. Eight. Okay. You can gain a bond with him or he can gain a bond with you. It's up to you. Um, and he stands and, um, you know, at first he looks, he actually kind of like seems to kind of shrink away a little bit as you grow closer. And then um, he sort of steps off the log that he's sitting on and stands and, and faces you and um, allows you to um, mark him with the forest, and that like um, uh, you know he's he's just sort of very stoic, standing there, and um, um, tears are streaming down his face. And Paiviki says, "Let them let them know that we come from the forest, and they and that." the forest will judge us and our actions. Um, sort of offering for anybody else to, um, you know, get forested up. Okay, great. Yeah, I think um, one by one, um, yeah, people sort of step forward and uh, you um, forest them up. <laughs> and so is this are you picturing like you guys have these daubs of like dark dark smears on your faces basically yeah i think there's some kind of um uh, you know like a grayish blue mud that you can find in the um the stream beds and stuff there that's that's kind of distinctive oh great okay and so it's like an opaque kind of um, yeah, almost like a, a paint, a paint-like smear. Yeah, smeary mud. Okay, so that it so that it stays and it's clear what it is, where it came from. Yep, got it. Um, and you know, here we are. We're returning. We're returning from the dead, <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming from the mother wood. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
and I'll I'll take a a bond with Voito. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, is there any other business before um, operation operation free Rayuna uh, occurs? Uh, I actually uh, translated out uh, Sasta Rayuna. The crab plan to save Rayuna. The uh, crab plan. For the pincer movement. <laughs> the crab plan. <laughs> Say it again. Well, I, I just want to hear uh, it. Sunatelma kapu sasta Rayuna. <laughs> so that's what we, there's a moment where Taimi and Aseri <laughs> are, like, are speaking that language. Um, Drawing. There's a picture. There's like a, in the in the mud of the stream bed. There's the there's the drawing. Yeah, I saw I saw crab. them in a salt ball in. They've probably yeah. never seen a crab. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be river crabs. Yeah, things with pinchers. Um, fish. okay, great. Crayfish. Uh, yeah. I think our three person uh, stealth team has no um, problem avoiding the very sp spare patrols. Um. And um, the sky is still dark when Taimi and Liren and Menea arrive uh, at the side, outside the gate, outside the wall of the Corque Italo. Um, um, Liren, I, I, I think that you should go see if Yarko is still in his a uh, uh, lowly hovel at the back of the Corquia Tallow. Mm -hmm. He might have a door into the main building or he might be able to, to help us get in. <laughs> um, poor thing. And uh, I guess so very um, quietly sneaking towards his is uh okay yeah so for you it's like you know Mene and Taimi are watching and for you climbing over that wall is just like no sound whatsoever you disappear over the wall um there's like um you smell a kind of um, you smell wood smoke and um you peek around the back of the big big house and there's Johnny you're picturing it like sort of like a a lean-to or like um, an actual structure built on the back of the big house? I can't recall. I don't think we ever described it. I'm just wondering if you have a I, mental image. I mean, he, he, he was a constable. And I think the idea was that like this place doesn't have a jail proper. They have like kind of a room with a cage in it, yeah, like a okay. drunk tank. And <laughs> that's where he has like a bed where he would hang his leather apron his only possession <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no no he has a set of iron cuffs with a key that's yeah, pretty yeah. good that's pretty good <laughs> that's probably got it yeah um so you hear the then you um quietly peek in and you see um there's your old <laughs> your old companion yarko who john what was the injury that he suffered he was the one that got attacked by the wolf right yeah the wolf like practically ripped his arm off okay. it like got him like right here and just and just tore um, right 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 okay i was right. going to ask whether he still has the arm uh he does not yeah it's been um i mean he's he's alive he survived but he lost the arm so he's um and then maybe this is the first time weirin's actually seen that i think maybe actually before after you guys got back from the cave of the beast that would have happened not too long after that so you knew that he already had lost his arm um and there he is just like snoozing away and he looks he's got actually a um uh to your disappointment there's um well actually don you should tell me if this lines up with your conception but i was going to say there's yeah. some some clay jugs of whatever the cheap stuff is um the, the beet derived alcohol the moonshine of the beet derived alcohol that the would that does that fit with yeah. Jericho? 
Yeah, I think I think that it I think that it took him a while to get to that point, but I definitely think that he eventually like he lost his job, he lost his arm, you know, the town kind of accepted that these guys were going back. He like the last conversation he had with any of them was uh Taimi promised that she was going to get him his arm back using magic. Oh, um, work in the numbers it's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> And I and I I think that he held out he held held on to hope for a very long time, Ugh. and maybe even on the short term when he saw Topias, he was like, oh my god, like this is it, like she's gonna come back, like my life's gonna get back on track, like they're gonna get rid of the Colkeen and it's gonna be a town again, it's gonna be back to normal. So maybe this is not his every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I I don't think he has a level of hopelessness that has driven him to like constant uh, drinking. But I right. definitely think on the short term. This has just been like a knife twisting, like, oh, like, this is my life now. You yeah, know? he thinks you're all dead, right? Okay, yep, right. So it's a fresh jug of moonshine that he has there. <laughs> um, yeah, so Mirren, and that's what you see is poor, poor old Yarko um, collapsed and, sh and snoring on his um, sleeping pallet. That's the, 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 uh, the dregs is called Veli, I just found in my notes. Oh, oh, Veli? oh great. The, the bad stuff. Yeah, <laughs> back Veli. from session zero. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can smell the veli. <laughs> the whole place, uh, very strong odor. Yeah. Do I know how to wake up Yarko secret uh, stealthily? Um. <laughs> like, is there a set? Is there a special way you can do that? <laughs> well, I don't want him to. Yeah, I worry he'll. Um, you know, he'll. He will be very surprised. So, <laughs> um, I guess I actually want to. Can I enter the hut um, fully? Yeah. Okay. The, the door, so, like you just, you just. The door is easy to the, open. The door opens just like, like this much, and you slip through sideways. And he's so okay. he's so, you know, he's snoring. So he's got the full on. You know, it's like that totally laid out body like nothing seems like it's going to disturb him so yeah you're not worried about waking him up accidentally um i guess i'll just speak very sternly and um quietly and just say yarko the time is here you need to wake up and follow me. <laughs> uh, John, what are Yarko's traits? Uh, Yarko is responsible and a hedonist. <laughs> hedonist. <laughs> oh, yeah. The That's it. Um, are you up for uh, playing him uh, as a secondary character, or does that take you too much out of being in Taimi's head? Yeah, no, I can, I can do him. He okay. just, I, I can do him, but you'll just have to step in when, like, he doesn't, I, like, I don't know things that have happened. Sure, of course. Um, uh -oh. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what Mirren says. Uh, 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 he... I think he, as his eyes are adjusting and he just sees like a, a, a you know, an unknown figure in his uh, hut, yeah. he kind of like looks around for some sort of, you know, bludgeon device or something. And he kind of just like rolls out of bed, hits the ground. <coughs> who's, who's there? Who's there? Um, I'll just remind him like, you must be quiet. Um, the hero. <laughs> uh, the heroes of Reuna um, have returned. <laughs> no, we need your help, so. Um, and, and, he's, and he, he squints. <laughs> Muirin? Is it you? <laughs> you, you? You live, but to, to Pierce told us that you had died. He said that you all had, had died. I'm sorry, we, I'm, I'm sorry he said that. Um, we have a plan and I want, we need your help. <laughs> uh, uh, um, 
Yeah, he's on. It's not just me. Yeah. (laughs) Not just you. The the others? Yes. yes. Um, mm -hmm. (laughs) Hi, Oh. Ayimi. Now come, oh. hurry, before anyone um, not- realizes that we're here, or Thanks. that I'm, we're back. Thank the tree, of course, of course. He's getting a little misty-eyed. He looks around. Uh, does, what does he have? Um, he's got, uh, he had some kind of weapon that first adventure, but in terms yeah. of... Yeah, do do, basically, basically, do I still have the same stuff? Short yeah. sword? Set of iron cuffs with key, leather apron, torches, tinderbox rations. Yeah, and then whatever, I don't know, after that adventure, if you guys left him with any extra stuff, but I think, um, yeah, I mean, he's got, and then whatever other kind of, you know, mundane, daily things you can imagine you might have in yeah. his spot is totally fine. Like, whatever. I, I'm going to say that, that Elmeri probably took away his sword. Ooh. Um, when when he lost his job yeah anyway, now 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 his only thing is just to watch people in the drunk tank um i think it's like the last one of the last or one of the few vestiges of el mary's ness is that he's not going to throw yarko out on his butt um but it, and so he just has like a, a a makeshift club okay um <clears throat> I'm, I'm i'm ready i'm ready um, should I, can I uh, signal the other two to come join us? So sure, they can, can be of, there, yeah, to get them, get yeah. it's not a problem, so they can be there, yeah. And so we can sort of decide how to get into the, the main area. So maybe you guys are all outside huddling near the corner of yeah. the Corky Italo. Yeah, so the four of you are there. Uh, uh, yeah, Yarko is like almost bouncing. He's giddy. <coughs> the, the heroes are back. <laughs> uh, and Taimi, this is always a weird sensation. Taimi claps, you know, claps him on the shoulder. Like, you were, you were in that cave too, friend. You were a hero, and we need you to, to help us. We need you to be a hero again. Um, we need, and this is maybe when you take over, Jason. We need to get into the uh, Corkia Talo. We're taking back Rayuna tonight. Um, no, you get to decide if Yorkon knows anything. But if it's extreme, it'll be an established role. Um, or if you don't, if that's too much, you can just make a luck roll to see if he knows anything useful. I mean, yeah, let's, let's just do like a 50-50 coin toss. So okay. uh, high, he knows something low, he doesn't. Four, okay. Um, no. they, they bar the door every night, but, but the window, the window, they keep bugging me to fix it, and I have it, it's, it's unlatched. <laughs> On the sunward side. Perfect. Come. <laughs> <laughs> So he leads them around. Well, you're on the sort of east side of it. Would it be the sunset side? The, the uh, I side? was thinking. I was thinking that we were approaching from the what I'm looking at is kind of like the north eastern side. That that side that's facing the little river. Yeah. Okay. And so I guess this is the side I'm talking about. Is the side one turn clockwise? Yeah, okay. Got it. Or I can just draw it on the screen. Yeah, I got it. Yep, the sunward side. Got it. Um. <clears throat> Great. So yeah. So you're yeah. There it is. You gesture. He sh- he he points at the at the window. Um, and then we're gonna cut to uh p- North Patrol. Um, and that is um the Paviki team. I was I was imagining you guys um doing this up here. Was sure. You were picturing that. Okay. That's fine. So at the same time, the other team is moving along in this area, and you'll see how that turns out. Um, uh, after you resolve how yours turns out. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so what's your sort of your sort of um, organization for ambush? Not like down to the nitty gritty, but like generally speaking, how are you hoping to um, surprise this person? Hmm. And there, do we do we get a look at them? Are they walking towards us or away from us? Um, 
Do we know? Let's, let's see, you're gonna make your way quietly up there and you get there. And I think you can just sort of hang out and watch him. Um, I think when you first see him, he'll be coming towards you. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that probably what we would do is just, um, you know, right around the, the trail up to Coasty's house, we would find a good bunch of bushes and have, you know, probably everybody hang out beside it, behind it, except for like a couple people would be behind a big rock on the other side of the road or something like that. So really just ready to, ready to jump out and get them and, um, and, and the backup team in case he runs to like cut him off. Okay. <clears throat> so <laughs> um, and he reaches the spot and um, you give the signal and how do you what's the what's the what's the opening how do you um, I mean, I wonder if the, um, I think just holding him up like with the crossbow and um, Paiviki's going to be ready with a, a spell. Uh -huh. She wants to use the weave of force to stop him from shouting uh, oh. to, to kind of uh, catch the <laughs> words out of the air and um, I think probably just have him go right to her hand. <laughs> um, if, if he seems to um, if he if he if he does that if he yells yeah okay and I would probably have um, uh, somebody fast on the other side of the road ready to run him down if he if he turns to run okay and it's Anika with the crossbow I think right yeah 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 um, and will you so you guys pop up and then you would say what would you you know just like put down your arms that kind of thing yeah. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, um, Anika and, um, Paiviki and, you know, followed by everybody else would just kind of like, but first us two would pop out, um, and say, stop, do not move or speak. Or you are, or you die. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so at this point, you know, uh, the sky is just starting to lighten. So it has that kind of early morning quiet. You hear like the, the, the chirping of birds and the bushes and the shrubs around. Um, uh, he gets that fork in the path and he's just sort of um, pauses for a second and is kind of looking out to the west. Um, and then he kind of like takes a long pivot on one leg and is just about to head back when you guys um, pop up and you say those words. And um, he like uh, is totally shocked and looks up at you and um, roll to negotiate. And you're gonna get it actually because of this crew that you have with you. And I think you have a strength modifier, right? Yeah. So you get a, you, you've maxed out your modifier to plus four. So you get plus four okay. to roll, and you don't have to spend that plus one forward you took from the night before because oh. you've maxed out the... All right. Bank it. <laughs> That's right. Banked. Ooh. I rolled a three plus four. <laughs> you needed that. <clears throat> yeah. To negotiate. Um, he says, uh, 
uh, um, he levels his crossbow at um, um, at you. He's just kind of like, uh, uh, only only if you if you if you promise my safety. And uh, Varpu like kind of like, you know, bristles forward a little bit. It, like you know, you can see you can see that she's poised, just like run yeah. him and run him through at a moment's notice. Yeah, and he and, says, and Paiviki says, um, "Lay down your weapon, and you will be treated treated fairly." My life, promise me my life. Promise on the forest. Promise on that old tree. Let me live. Swear it. I swear it. On the tree, swear it on the tree. On the tree, I swear it. And he like pauses. And then he drops the crossbow and, and raises his hands. And then boom, everybody's on him. Um, and um, she jumps in and makes sure that nobody kills him. <laughs> No, no, sorry. They, they're like on him to just contain him. They're not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not attacking him. Yeah. But you, you just make sure that, <laughs> that you can follow through on that oath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> people are clearly, you know, angry at him, but they're, they're following their orders and they're not, um, not going to do anything that you don't want them to do. Um, at the same time, elsewhere, the other ambush team is doing their thing, and they are led by a fairy, and the fairy's competence is plus one, plus his whole crew, they get a plus four, too. So, um, uh, Jan, why don't you roll for them, too, since you're sort of the, the ambush guy. All right. No problem. They got a 14. Oh, okay. let's go. So then um, we cut back to the big house and um, there's this unlatched window on the sunward side. What are you guys doing there? Um, I guess we should just open it and first take a, take a peek. <clears throat> and who, so who's gonna do that? We're in. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky, clammy elf person. Yeah, so you have to, um, and I think so. It's I think if it's a latch, it's like a it's like a single big kind of shingle shutter that latches on the inside, and it's even like you hear it go clack clack. There's a little bit of a breeze, and it's going clack clack because that latch is broken and Yarko hasn't fixed it yet. And so Mirren um, is able to like climb up, push that open, and um, haul herself up. Um, and kind of peer into the, oh yeah, and especially good because Mirren's got the elf eyes because you guys, for you guys, it'd be pitch black in there. There's not, no moonlight, sunlight, nothing. It's just dark. Um, although I guess there is, there's embers in the fire pit. So you see that, you see a couple of, um, you know, uh, Mary has the area divided by a couple of uh, some screens with um, sort of stretched hides on them to kind of subdivide the space. Um, you hear the sounds of breathing and, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So um, all seems peaceful in there, and um, between the sounds you're hearing and the, the sort of stuff you're able to make out in the in the gloom, um, you can tell that the two word keepers and Elmeri are all there. Um, so it's just one big open space. Right. Yeah, it's one big space that these these dividers have been set up to kind of um, create smaller spaces. Um, so from our position, can I, um, identify which, who is, where El Mary is? And yeah, he's at the far from the, away from the, the, the wall furthest away from the front entrance. He's got like, you know, ostensibly he's got a better sleeping setup. He's got some furs and, um, you know, like some, some nicer things. <laughs> John's just saying. He's gonna, he's gonna sleep on rock. <laughs> 
I don't want to ruin his night. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> He's gonna trade beds with Yarko. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, let's get him. <laughs> He's gonna sleep in that shitty drunk tank. Um. Uh, so we yeah. have crossbows too, right? The three of us. You had what? Crossbows. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Tiny. So Manea, Manea has a did you get Manea crossbow? She might have a short bow, but anyway, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. It's a short bow. Yeah. Um I guess like do we want to basically just kind of like have this window be our entry point, or do we want to sneak in and unbar the door? Ooh, so that when I the see. group comes here, we they just open it up, but that would require somebody probably you to like to continue go, to go into the room yeah. unbar the door and then either come out the window or just go out through the front door yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we would have taking the bar with you <laughs> <laughs> so that you would then have an unbarred door but yeah that'd be pretty it'd be pretty risky yeah this that move from we are in who so far it hasn't been a problem but because it's a close court close quarters and there's three people sleeping in here that would be an actual role not that you couldn't do it because sure. You've got a decent dexterity, but it would require a little. Um, right. I think it is probably better to make sure that entry point is um, sabotaged. So, um, unless unless all three of us want to try to, you know, each do like one one bow pointing at um, each guard. That's too. I'm just worried noise. about. I'm worried about Minea. I'm worried. I mean, Yarko can't get up there, but I'm worried about Minea. Like, even with a bow at this guy's neck, like, the, I mean, word keepers are tough. You know, all it takes is for him to swap it away, and then like, they might get the jump on us. I don't know. I, 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 I yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm cautious, but I also am am cautious about sending you in there by yourself. <laughs> oh, because if they wake up, then it's going to be a sticky wicket. Yeah, I guess the other um, factor that Mirren takes in is that you can see that their weapons are you know by their beds. Mm -hmm. um, so you see like an unloaded crossbow, and um, you know there's like a short sword and a sheath hanging from one of the screens so you know that they sleep near near their weapons and their weapons are present so maybe there's a way to remove those that, that's another kind of factor in the yeah circumstance well maybe um yeah could i collect the um the range the crossbows. Um, so you want to quietly go around and just kind of remove the crossbows from their proximity? Yeah, the ones that would cause like the most, like a short bow, I guess if I can carry any of the, even the short bow too. Um, but yeah, definitely the crossbows and um, uh, try to sneakily walk out the front door. <laughs> okay, so take the ranged weapons, leave them their swords? Um, could I carry that many? This would be like a weight of four. Right, so you'd have, you'd be picking up the, you could, you know, it's one of these things where you got this, then you put this in this your arm, and you could carry the sword. You could do it, yeah, but you will be, I wouldn't necessarily even say you'd be burdened, but you will be, your arms, Loud. Will, be, your arms will be full. <laughs> I mean, you're a super quiet elf. You'd, ha you'd, it would, oh. you'd just have to roll. <clears throat> you could, no, I won't say anything because I'm not there. <laughs> and a partial, so it would be a sort of a single saving throw with dexterity and a partial success would mean you'd get some of the stuff when one of them would wake up. I'll just That's what the stakes are. Mm -hmm. And oh, a total failure that. would mean that like, the first guy that you go to get something from, something's going to happen. Right, right. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I figure that 
if there's noise, um, Taimi and uh, Manea would just come up anyway. I mean, like, I'll be up yeah. at the window ready to like pop up and shoot someone with the crossbow. Yeah, so I'll, um, yeah, I will roll to collect those um, okay. <clears throat> weapons. So John, I think for a time, I'm picturing the window being kind of high off the ground, um, mm. like arms reach away. Mm -hmm. um, does that jibe? Is that yeah, right? yeah. I don't. I don't think that this sort of house would have. I don't think they would tolerate uh, an oh. unlatched window at like normal person weight. Right. Height. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so then maybe you're standing on Yarko's shoulders in order to like, yeah. get get the. <laughs> yeah. Because um, the thing has to be held open. And, yeah, so I think what, what it is is Manea is up there holding the, the, the shutter kind of away. You're on Yarko's shoulders with your crossbow out, so you can cover um, cover Mwirin. Okay. Mwirin, what is your dexterity? Uh, two. Plus two. All right. And I don't have any special bonuses to the roll. What about um, cunning? Oh, uh, cunning. I think it only It'll be for poison. poison. <laughs> okay, um, but you also have the plus one because it's your first roll of the day, right? Oh no, you didn't take that. I took. I took HP. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's good. It makes it. I have luck. It yeah. Makes it interesting. Yeah, you got luck. You got luck to burn. Okay, go for it. Gary. <clears throat> um, nine. No, wait, no, ten. Because oh. I got a eight plus two is ten. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Yahtzee. Oh. <laughs> Yahtzee. Okay, so uh, Taimi's watching from above. It takes Taimi's eyes for a few moments to adjust, and then the kind of glow from the embers, you know, creates a very, very dim light. And you're able to see the kind of silhouette of Muirin um, moving from um, screen to screen and the quiet um, taking of the objects. There's a moment where you see... Um, her hand, the, the embers are kind of shining through one of these hide screens and you see the silhouette of the of the belt and the and the scabbard and you see her reach up and just silently remove that um, and then um, kind of laden with this stuff um, and totally there's like not a single sound like maybe you hear the of the of the firewood a little bit one of the guys rolls over in his sleep um, and uh, we are, and you make it to the front door with all the stuff in your arms. And then when you go, um, sort of just sort of reach down and unhook the bar. <laughs> what is? Yeah. Uh, what's it look like on the inside? Like, are are we like bar on the door, or is it like a like a a latch that comes down, or? It is actually a bar that um, just gets totally removed and set to one side. Not unlike the, the jail at La Devisi, actually. But okay. that bar was on the outside. <clears throat> um, I wonder if I just like put so I'm I'm, I'm quite a distance away, right? Um Yeah, from... you're like I mean the nearest guy is probably um fifteen feet away from you. Yeah, so like I wonder how much effort is it actually to um to open that door. Quietly. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you're going to have to put down all the stuff because it's a pretty big yeah. bar. Yeah, um, okay. <clears throat> Could I um, have, can I hold two cross, can I put down most of the weapons and then just have two crossbows out at the door and both of them are like um, loaded? Like holding them? Quite. Yeah, just, just ready to, ready to go. Wakes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so loaded right. and ready to go as you, un that's, yeah, totally you can do that. So you load, so you like, <laughs> so you get both the crossbows loaded. <laughs> and Set I like, them. I do this like so slowly that it doesn't take. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, great. Yeah, so meanwhile, the two groups of captured, the, the two captured patrol guys are being led back towards the um the croquet talo great so you got the crossbow set up and then you go to remove the bar right okay that's going to take a roll because it's okay yeah because that actually it doesn't both. require you're 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 you got a feather light step, step and you're super quiet but this bar is not you know it's not technology that's meant to be quiet so <laughs> 
Um, and then is this just the dex roll? Actually, I think it's a luck. Roll? I think it's just a luck roll to see if it's too um, kind of squeaky. Uh, okay. Six. You got a six. <laughs> Correct. But I have two bows loaded. <laughs> you sure do. You have two bows loaded. Um, uh, so you go, you, you put your hands on the bar and you're like, um, you, you pick up one and it goes in the, um, the kind of clasp that's holding it onto the door. And um, tying me from your position, you see um, one of the guards go, <laughs> and he goes up and he reaches for where his sword is on the screen. He goes, dum, 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 dum. Ah, what? Hey, <clears throat> hey. And he's like um, shouting to wake the other guys. Um, uh, 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 none of you move. <laughs> none of you move. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see. A voice in the dark. Does none of you move? Hmm. Is You're surrounded. <laughs> in a two dozen, two dozen men here. <laughs> uh, uh, his the other workkeeper wakes up, and Larry's like, huh? 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 Um, the two guys are scrambling around for their weapons and like. Wait, he says, they say we're surrounded. Wait, what's going on? Where's my sword? Um, the door, I could even just push open the door right at this point. Uh, just... Yes. Um, do, you, do you want to do that and reveal yourself in the morning light, like silhouetted, against, <laughs> silhouetted in the doorway with your two crossbows? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just worry that, um, um, I, w I would actually like to pick up their weapons um, with me then. If, if I leave, I would want to take the weapons. So, um, 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 yeah, actually, what if I step out with all their weapons and then I kind of block the door? Um, so have you got like their swords on your, like are you wearing their swords? Or just throwing them over your I'm shoulder? I'm going to bundle them again. Carry okay, so not not brandish yeah, the crossbows. Yeah, then I, yeah, I can't brandish the crossbows, right, but right. if I, like, just pick up all the weapons, step out the door, and then just, like, guard the door, the okay. entrance, then they're trapped in there. And you're, right. you're just removing the swords out. Mm. And, and guarding the door. Right. Are, are, they, you, um, are you leaving the door yeah. open, or would you shut the door behind you? I would shut the door. Okay. So you're going to exit and shut the door. Um, and and could, could, yeah, could I take the bar with me? <laughs> <laughs> could, could you open could the door and just throw all the shit out? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, so you remove Basically, the bar. I want them trapped in that, in that, in that. Well, in to that, actually um, trap them, the door opens outward so you could block the door from the outside. Right. Because um, you don't want them to escape, I see. Or you could just yeah. act as a... Um, a, you know, standing there with crossbows. So if they move towards the door, they see that you're there going to stop them. That would essentially trap them even if the door was open. That's um, a good point. Uh, I mean, you do hear voices on the road, so you know that you're, the other, the other teams are coming. Um, Tiny, just to be clear, the, because it's dark and they're confused, your, your, your sort of threat is not visible to them they don't see any evidence that they're gonna but it's definitely confusing and they don't have their you know what i mean like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not gonna really negotiate until they really understand that they're really under threat um they're just trying to like figure out what the hell's going on at the moment um so mirin you would kick open the door throw the swords outside and hold on to the crossbows is that right Well, why don't you describe exactly what you would do? I think actually maybe the better move is just have the door, just I'm guarding the door from the inside to make sure that it's unlatched and, and I will, uh, 
wait for it. Uh, I'll stand guard at the door waiting for them to um, to show up. Realize. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait for um, the Oh, for the other Probably guys, the, the other crew. Okay. Um, I see, Taimi sees that you're not moving. Uh, you know, she's, she sees you like kind of standing there, like actively like guarding the door and moves to, to, to join you. I'm not going to leave you in, a ha in that house by yourself. Um, and I'm going to tell... Um, Manea. Yeah. Manea, thank you. Uh, to, to hurry and go tell... Uh, Paiviki and, and Varku and Aseri that the the that we have we have them. Got it. That, go and go. That, and she's go, gone. Go, go. Yeah, she's gone. Yeah. Um, and I and I, I hop over the windowsill and And you drop inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um so they're like, what what uh, get the light, get the light. Um and they're over near El Mary. Um and El Mary's like fumbling around and there's like a um as they're like striking flint to steel. Um, they're trying to light like a, a candle or something. So you guys are hanging out in the dark in those positions that you described, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, uh, El Mary like uh, holds up um, a tallow uh, candle and kind of like peers out and from where he is, it's just like the shadows of the screens against the walls. And the two um, word keepers are, are next to him, you know, uh, looking around, um, armed, you know, without any weapons on them. And they see, so did Taimi want to be like not visible behind a screen or be in clear sight? I think Taimi would move to be, to, to help Muir and guard the door. Oh, okay, great. So then they're like, look forward and they see, uh, uh, the two of you at the far end of the um, barely they can barely make you out, but they see these two figures at the end of the of the house um, brandishing crossbows. Who 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 intrudes? Who dares set foot in the wood? Give us house. Um. Uh. Uh. uh who dares? Who dares? You rat! Uh, you're the ones uh, who are resting your filthy boots uh, where they're not welcome. Uh, you've, been, you've been suckling on the teat of the wolf for, for far too long, you disgusting, puke-smelling... <laughs> I'm just throwing every Rayunin curse at him. Oh, it's that accursed hunter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not nearly as surprised as I hope. No, no, no. no. He's like, he's like, his face kind of like, he doesn't say that. He's, his face like, you can see in the candlelight as he realizes who's talking to him. It, 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 you know, it just goes through a, contort, a series of contortions yeah. as like, his, he's trying to process this information of this person he thought was dead. And then he says, um, um, a ghost, a phantom. Get, 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 get them, get uh, them. I, I shoot the crossbow, uh, like, n you know, two feet next to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Weapons, you fools, get your swords. Oh, we don't have our swords, we're, charge them. And they both just kind of look at him. Um, Outside, the two teams arrive in the square, um, and Menea um, has informed you of the situation. So Paiviki and everybody else are now, you've got these two captive uh, word keepers, and you're in front of the house. Yeah, I would go to the front door and, and pull on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Taimi has drawn her short bow and has an arrow drawn, and that just that idea that idea that that that's so el mary to like throw someone at his problems you know he couldn't fight the beast he couldn't he could barely be bothered to help us and now even like 
when it's so clear that like we have their weapons and like rushing at us would be certain death like he continues to just throw people's lives away and i just like i i, I just i have it trained i have it trained and it just i can't do it i can't do it. i finally have that moment you know i've been waiting all these months to finally stick a yeah, tell on yeah, mary yeah, yeah. and i can't even at his worst even at his worst i i i remember what that rage looked like and i stopped myself as Pipeiki opens the door right and in fact it's like you've got the bow train and just as you make that you sort of your your the arrow tip drops um the door the light the dawn's light creeps in that crack of the door as it opens and kind of illuminates um Taimi as it as it sweeps open um and then spills across the inside of the room and Paiviki and Varpu and Aseri um, are there standing in the doorway with Taimi and Mirin on um, either side. Um, and Yarko um, sort of shows up around the corner. And there's, you know, there's, that, there's a whole crowd of people outside the building. Um, uh, and the three uh, new arrivals um, sort of step across the threshold and now um, uh, you're all facing him, and he's like, "What? What is this? All of you returned. You were supposed to be dead. That stupid boy, that foolish, foolish boy. That boy is no fool. You're the fool, El Mary. You're the fool for thinking that, for taking the easy way out, for for seeing the Colkeen and seeing nothing but strength." Um, controlling and ruling other people isn't strength it's cowardice and it's over <laughs> um the word keepers kind of step away um from him and um you know sort of hold up their hands um in submission and kind of cast distasteful looks in his direction and um he sort of falls to his knees with the candle and says, spare me, spare me. <laughs> the classic. Classic, I'll marry. Um, yeah. I don't know, give, give him the terms. Come out, El Mary, come out of your hole. Um, so you guys all back out of the building? Yeah. Um, and he, um, um, you, you know, comes outside. There's a semicircle of people all around him. Um, some of them gathered outside the front gate. At this point, villagers, villagers have started to emerge and there's a sort of, um, the word spread quickly and there's shouts and hubbub because people realize who is here, who has returned. Um, and the sun is breaking over the Eastern Hills and um, El Mary and the two word keepers you know, emerge um, from the doorway. And there's whoops and hollers and um, kids are like rubbing their eyes and running in the streets. Yay, kids. <laughs> and he just looks like, what you know, um, this is like his worst, it's, it's the fear he's had the entire time he's been here. <laughs> it's not as bad as it could be because he was picturing worse things, but like, you know, this is the fear come to, mm. um, come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just did what they told me. I was just saying what they, I was just doing what they made me do. I think um, we just bring them outside and um, and just uh, and speak to all the people that are assembling of Reuna and say We are free at last.
We have come with the people of La Devesi. La Devesi is also free. And um, kind of like point to Aseri and all the people from La Devesi. There's like a huge shout, a huge shout yeah. goes up. Yay! Yeah. Uh, timing, we're in. Like your voice, yeah. your, your names are being said about. You see um, Sais and um, Costi in the crowd. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole gang. Um, uh, uh, and and we, t we tell them that they're going to be given a trial. Um, I think in the in the hubbub, uh, Taimi would see Kosti and see her uh, his beautiful shoes. Right, he was a cobbler. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he yeah, made yeah. like the, just notable footwear, right? Like really, really good shoes, including the, the <laughs> shoes that Weird is wearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's something about that. There's something there's something very Rayunin about Kosti's shoes. <clears throat> and Taimi uh, uh, points at the Elmeri and the word keepers. Take their boots. Colkeen boots will never touch these lands again. <laughs> um, and uh, without hesitation, <laughs> at, at, instantly at Taimi's order, um, they're plucked off the ground by like a crowd of half a dozen villagers, and their boots um, are are yanked off their uh, off their feet. Um, in in Elmeri's case, case, it's uh, the the two workkeepers did sleep in their boots, but Elmeri had some um, some doeskin slippers on, and those are pulled off of his off of his feet and kind of thrown to the crowd. Good. Um, nobody's calling for blood because the Rayunas are not a bloodthirsty folk, but everybody is like um, elated that um, that you've returned and um, that in, in that same moment that they realize that the three of you are alive despite um, everything that they've been led to believe, um, at that same moment that they realize that, um, uh, they're uh, the authority figure that has um, sort of represented their oppression is being brought out into the light. Mm -hmm. um, would it be effective for us to maybe kind of like montage a little bit? Yeah, that's great. That's a great idea. That's perfect. Because uh, what sort of stuff do you all think should happen now in the immediate aftermath? <laughs> I don't know about now, but I would, I would have them go and sit underneath the old tree. Um, Who the the Colkeen? Yeah, I mean that's the, that's the center of Rayuna, not the Corke Atalo, and so, the, the the tree. Um, you know, is the art the ultimate judge. Um. But I don't know if there's time to do that now. I but mean, now, I was picturing them just sort of sitting on the ground while everybody else celebrates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there can be a procession to the tree for sure. And then there can be yeah. moments we see moments yeah. of the, yeah. Um, yeah, go. I like, I mean, I, I think we're going to have the same problem that we ran into in La Devisi where we can't try them because then there's the possibility that they're free to go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and we can't have them going so we need to at least keep them for five days yeah um so we need to figure out some sort of jail situation we need to take like a house and kind of outfit it and have shifts of people you know watching them um, um yeah well tinny shows up um, the tree keeper and um, there is an ancient tradition where the people who are held um, in judgment of the forest are actually tied to the old tree um, and watched over so they can't leave and then in the shade of the tree they um, whatever judgment or um, is going to happen so they'd be sleeping and eating in, in basically under the old tree under supervision unless that doesn't jibe with what time he wants <laughs> oh no that that's fine and okay. if there's a tradition if there's a something in place and they have like a bucket to do their business in yeah so as not to soil the tree yeah for sure. um 
what of the people from Ladevasi? They are, well, with Asari as a representative, because he is essentially, you know, before he was, he was the kind of um, informal leader of the village. Yeah. Um, he uh, is ready to do whatever you guys want him to do. I mean, you can consider him a lieutenant at this point. Um, you've accomplished great things and uh, uh, you've benefited his people greatly and it's only been a day. <laughs> so mm. nobody needs to get back to their family right away. So if you need the Ledevacians for anything, they are there for you. Um, um, yeah, so maybe there's a moment where Taimi is even having that exchange with him in the midst of all of the... Um, yeah, celebrations. That, I mean, that ende that endears me to the people of Levdevasi because I, you know, had entertained the idea that they might just be like, okay, well, we did it. Peace. Later, we're gonna fix our village. Yeah. Now there's there there's this feeling of momentum and celebration, and for all of them like coming down here after most of them not coming in this to this area in a long time, it's like very exciting. So, um, you know, nobody's been hurt, nobody's been killed. Um. Uh, Sonelma, the beat, the um, red cap brewer is, um, you know, uh, cracking open bottles and passing those around. Donna, did you have any visions? Um. Just. Yeah, nothing specific, just enjoying the um, the celebration and the happiness that everyone is experiencing. Um, Several of the kids bring Weir in these flower wreaths. Um, and you realize that it was these specific kids that had laid the ones at your, at your hut. So they're all super excited that you're alive. It's very sweet. Um, yeah, no, um, I think, yeah, I was, I'm just imagining part, being part of the, um, the joy and the free, the liberation. Um, and I suppose if there's planning to do, um, we're in, we'll join in on if there's future planning for, <laughs> you know security or um, the um, impending word, uh, the hand arrival. Yeah. yeah, we can we can do that next time. Right now, you guys can just yeah. enjoy right. the, everybody can just enjoy the. Um, yeah, we, I mean, got, we got hella stories to tell and. Yeah, there's, right, because you, you're right. These guys are going to be hearing about your journeys. Yeah. Yeah, it, and Topias, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how NPCs level up, but give that kid a level. <laughs> I know, right? I would, yeah, I would take, when we start telling our story, um, I would take Topias and like bring him in and tell him what a role he has been playing throughout all these things and making it possible for us to do this. So that he, so the people are assured of his, role is not just like the survivor <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but the um but what an important role he played all the time yeah so he obviously is beaming the whole time that you're um saying that and his parents could not be more proud um and annika's like you know like slapping him on the back uh i think we send out two ladevisians to go to uh, get our cart and all the gifts. Oh yeah, right, all the stuff from the South, that's right. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, that's okay, great. Yeah, so it's, um, you don't wanna to spend too much time, so that would take a day for them to get that back, but um, you do wanna move relatively quickly, or do you feel like things are, things are in terms of the hand arriving, you feel like you have bought a little time. You've got Rayona in hand, so that feels. Um, I mean, you know, Topias kind of gave us a rough estimate, but I'm sure like we can get, you know, that worm Elmeri 
mm -hmm. to give us uh, like something more concrete. Yeah, he can't. He doesn't. He has. He knows just as much as CPS, just because of the way okay. news, the news news travels. There's just estimates in terms of when people will arrive. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think we deserve to have like. I mean, it's breaking dawn, right? Like, so I think that we have we can rest for the day and maybe set out in the evening. Set out to the east and okay, great. Please spend yeah. the day. Spend the day celebrating and then spending the afternoon planning. Maybe there's a nap in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a nap. We'll take a gnarly midday nap. Okay. Was the was the was the the best guess that they would arrive at um, in a day or two? Earliest is two days. Earliest is two days. Yep. And they're thinking at at the outside might be five days. Oh, okay. Given given like at the very fastest the or not even the fastest but like average speed of the messenger going back to the capital the time it would take to come back this way would be um two days at, at the at the quick end two days from yeah. now is yeah but all you know a trip to the capital takes two days um with just like one person on foot so it'd be a four-day journey total um, blah blah blah, but that's the that's the current estimate. Um, could one of the things we do is like just collect all of the corking stuff and then put them in a big pile somewhere, like yeah. all of the weapons and all of the um, like did they install any weird like? There's no like um, stat statue or anything but um no just all of the court yeah. yeah the house itself is kind of a symbol of um mm. uh, ani um they built the house but there's no like um the god uh, ani doesn't have a lot of um kind of uh iconic representation physically it's all about the language and the speaking of the words um so the house is the only real kind of symbolic corking thing aside from their just their signature kind of clothing and, and weaponry and stuff. You do find the books. The books are in El Mary's corner of the of the house. So he had them. Surprised he didn't burn them. Well, they're potentially valuable. He was really interested in oh, never mind. That's totally <laughs> <Yeah>. El Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, besides the Corkeen stuff, I would be really interested in the books and any other objects that El Mary has accumulated. He seems to be a bit of a hoarder. Yeah, that's true. Would we um we'd, would we want to like redistribute any of the stuff that like that El Mary had taken from other people, like um the share of treasures from that previous um that pre that, that first Cave of the Beast uh adventure. Well, we only gave him um, like one of those jewels. Oh, we didn't give him very much. Oh, okay. no, <laughs> like a token. Like, oh yeah, we found this. <laughs> that, and then he and then he went digging through all of our stuff trying to find more loot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we had hidden it. Okay. We had hidden it. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other business before we wrap up? Uh, that sets the stage. Are we gonna pick up? at the planning phase next week or are we going to pick up at the party phase i think planning probably unless there's more party you want to do no do we do we tell them everything i assume that we do i just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page about that yeah what what were you thinking what wouldn't we tell them or what Not, nothing i just i just yeah. didn't know i didn't want to later on assume that we had told them everything but then someone right. would say oh no i would have held that back I think um, Pius is excited because he finally gets to talk about all the stuff you guys did together. So he's like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, everybody's yeah. very excited about that. Yeah. I, think it, I mean, the only question I would have is, are there any reunions who are like sneaking off into the woods right now mm -hmm. to go tell the Corkeen? You know, that, that would be my concern. Right. Is any, that any. there's some people that are on their side that oh. have moved to the town that are not word keepers. Yeah. Oh shit. Very real potential. 
Um, so there I was, would, yeah. I would potentially have like a, you know, not one of us, but like some groups of um, La Devesians kind of like guarding the road and guarding the, the river okay. crossings yeah. and, you know, put a pretty, pretty strong watch because we, you know, we think that the hand is coming in two days, but there's a lot of things that could happen and go wrong. That's true. That's, that's really smart. Um, uh, it would, that would, that would really break Taimi's spirit though. To know, yeah, that would be rough. Uh, yeah. I mean, I imagine there's some people that, that are in town that are not from Rayuna. Mm -hmm. There's right. probably a few. There's the merchants, some of the traveling merchants, and there's definitely a, a couple of people who are not local. Yep. And not there's, native. there may be some collaborators too, like folks who are, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Topia are, said that they had some like very genuine real interactions with and relationships with some people. Yeah. So that's, that's a really great question. It's one I've been thinking about and we'll resolve it next time we'll, we'll answer those those questions okay. those are yeah that's a great um thing to consider an unfortunate fact of the real world that that does happen oh yeah um great so we can we can think about that next time and then yeah so big party all over town everybody's you know um uh various interactions with people um uh Kosti and his wife are just like super happy to be um uh hearing about um what you all have been up to and all the time you've been away um shaking their heads at the idea that Kosti could have been an adventurer at his advanced age um yeah and then maybe there's that maybe there's that hint there's that last hint of like somebody you know um, behind the corner of a house kind of like peering <laughs> peering around and in like a cloak and then turning and moving towards the bushes or something like that <laughs> oh to give us a little a little hint of what might lie around the corner okay and i would um i would want to give uh teeny that um that conch shell that um the the salt walls and gave us Trying to remember, I already squandered the the um, the honeymoon. The honeymoon. Yeah. Us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh uh, yeah, conch shell gift. All right, let's get rid of that. I think. Um, we'll, um, yeah, John, what were you going to say? Oh, do you want to do that next next time? Jason? I think maybe let's start with like a, a sort of like something like that, like a like that kind of like gesture of connection okay. between the Venati and yeah uh, and, and before you guys it'll be before before you guys kind of set out that'll be a nice like the cart will arrive back after i guess that night or the next morning i guess yeah i think there's some i think there's some bookkeeping that we can do at the beginning of next session with like distribution of when when you what is it called spank store what do you do with silver <laughs> spank stash Stash, bank, thank bank you. it, bank it is the is the move. But you're stashing silver. Yeah. Stash it, can, and stash can take multiple forms, right? Like altruistic and donation can be stashing, right? Like us, us Fictionally, giving you can them. Describe it. Yes, absolutely. If you want to invest in, invest. In so like uh, like us giving, we don't have to necessarily like sell something or. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Us, us, the act of us giving them the bundles of fur and. For sure. Yeah. Some of this stuff and. Okay. Okay. That would totally just, count. Yeah, that'll get you some XP. <laughs> um, no, I guess I guess the only thing I'll add into the party, and I don't feel like role playing it out, is that like, you know, Anika has been a very good friend, and I know that like because of like the experience in the monsters cave that brought like Paiviki and Wiren and I really close together, you know it often feels like the three of us are working in tandem and that she's sometimes on from on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to like assure her that like, you know, she's always going to be a part of the team and that, you know, just, just show her some kindness during the party. Great. That's awesome. 
um, she's very, very appreciative. And, uh, you know, it's because you guys are playing the characters that we focus on your interactions mostly, but yeah, we have to imagine that interstitially An Anika has been in interacting with you and has been. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, definitely not one of the main characters, but it has been, yeah. I was trying to find the non, the, the meta way, the non-meta way to say that, like, she's not a PC. <laughs> so. yeah, 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 yeah. Great. I don't have reason to talk to her as often. Yeah. <laughs> um, you do see a look in her eye where um, she's looking around at it all and um, taking it in and you can see that she's been changed by everything you guys have been through and that she you can just tell that she would not be happy settling down because she's seen too much of the world yeah yeah i would never ask that of her um okay wrapping up if you're a fighter mark xp if you solved the problem with physical prowess um, I mean, you guys solved the problem. I mean, the stealth and trickery is what solved the problem in the big house, I think. Int what about like intimidation? Yeah, 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 that counts. For, so yeah, for Paiviki gets a point for that. And um, yeah, yeah, and no, you, yeah, Tiny does too, because the intimidation was a huge factor there. So fighters get all, each get a point and Thief gets a point for the stealth and trickery. Um, traits, anyone, traits? Um, I, I need to find a good adjective to describe my new trait now that I'm like post bloodlust. And do you think it would be a, a positive trait? I, I don't know. I really have to take a look at some okay. of your examples and, and okay. see where that lands. So, but I'm, so I'm not going to take an XP for that. Okay. Yeah. If you just look at the trait, if you look at the trait table and, um, when you have time, just look yeah. through to see what it's good. I mean, merciful. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that. If I'm there, if you've if gone I'm that there, far, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I also okay. still like being chaotic, so mm -hmm. I'm. I'm mm -hmm. trying to maybe. Is there a bad one? Yeah. Right. If you want to keep two, yeah. Um, what else we got here? Viviki, bold and boastful. Um, it, it's easy to say that you're bold when you're. But you're not really bold when you're seven against one. When you got back up at that scale. <laughs> Necessarily. That's true. I guess it's not really bold. Um, I think it was bold to swear on the tree. Hmm. I think that's, um, a, that, that's a big deal. Hmm. I mean, he, and he, he worded it in such a way that, like, I'm nervous about if the verdict comes down and it's death, what that's going to mean. Right. Yeah, 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 that's great. That's good. Yep. Take a point. All right. Um, we're in focused. Yeah. Right. Uh, usually. <laughs> well, I mean, you basically uh, managed to um, win the entire fight by carefully sneaking around and taking everyone's weapons. <laughs> I I felt focused as I woke up. Um, each person as quietly as possible. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Tried to keep it very um, <clears throat> as not chaotic as like a, possible. Yeah, a controlled situation <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I feel like both, I think that, that both chaotic and lawful characters get to mark XP because you both, you disrupted a system of order. <laughs> which was Elmeri's rule, but you also um, created a system of order by bringing peace back to the village. So both, um, mm -hmm. well, everybody gets XP for a line. Well, Paiviki mm -hmm. has shifted over into neutral. I oh, don't okay. Know about yeah, same, well. yeah, same with- Oh, you guys uh, are both neutral. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. I need yeah. to update. Is it um, the imbalance though? Cause- um, Yep. The balance of like the, the got, the, the tree in the village that sort of puts it back in the right um, order or. Yeah, and I, well, I would say that thing. because the kind of um, the organizing cultural principle of the village is the forest and the forest is, a, you know, it's nature, which is 
more of a realm of balance that I think yeah. that, that applies. Yeah. It, it, has this changed on the version that I have? It says neutral satisfy a personal need. Oh. Um, or imbalance or or write an imbalance. I think it was that's I think basically still the same. So it would be to write an imbalance, which would be the power imbalance, I guess, in the village. Okay. Did it. Um, all right. And did you make an exciting discovery? Was anything not expected? I don't think so. Um, Is this the like learning something new about the world? Yeah. I'm sure that would we have already known about this kind of trial by tree? Yeah. Okay. I think you guys would have known about that. And, and someone has previously told us that the hand has magic controlling powers. We've already yeah. heard that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I then, so. then I got nothing. Um, did you overcome a difficult obstacle? Yeah. Everybody gets XP. Yeah. Let's go. Did you acquire some memorable booty? Just quirking clothing and weapons <laughs> and stuff. Wait, does does Elmeri yeah. not have anything specific to loot? Uh, well, I, I have to roll that up, so I don't even okay. know yet. But we can we can retroactively give XP if we get something good out of okay. that. Yeah. So next time we'll figure that out. I mean, we got magic books, but we also had the magic books yeah. before, so right. we lost <laughs> them and got them. <laughs> yeah, and you got XP the first time you got them. So yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a loophole. We, we <laughs> strike up a deal with a thief who continually steals our magic book. Right. <laughs> we got magic books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just all muscle bound. <laughs> I always forget to take my, um, my point at the end of the session for being a human. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like... Oh, and so like when you roll, when I rolled the six on luck, that's not an experience point because it's luck, right? Um, when you roll a six on luck, you don't get nothing. That's the, the rough thing about a <laughs> luck roll. It, it just says when you roll a six or less, the judge will say how your hopes are dashed. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> <laughs> Can't be all uh, fun in yeah. games. <laughs> um, okay. Nice work. Yeah. Yeah. Back home. It was extraordinarily satisfying. Successful rebellion so far. I agree. Funny. That was fun. Um, great. And I guess we'll plan next week for now make sure my yeah well i'll sort that out um it's bedtime yeah <laughs> thanks everybody good job yeah thank you so much jason good job thanks. thank That's you fun. people of rayuna good to see you guys we did it i'm ex i'm excited i feel like this is the close of a chapter yeah, 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 for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, this is like from the very beginning, this is like some serious closure going on. Yeah, for sure. All right. Good night. Good night.